Okay, power. Um, now, if you don't have power, you don't have computing power. Um, you know, all our computers run on electricity these days, so you need electricity. And um, it needs to be clean. It, it, uh, most computing equipment these days does have some power protection. They have their own power supplies. Um, but equally, um, we are getting more used to the fact that we have to separate uh, power supplies, power um, systems for uh, computer equipment, information technology, communications equipment, whatever, from other types of equipment that has very large electrical motors, which can do a lot of variations on the power supply. Uh, we get surges, we get sags, we get uh, different things that's happening. Um, so, uh, you know, that we, we do have some equipment that is to be used in rugged environments that is built for that, uh, has uh, power supplies that can withstand surges and sags and even that out um, to supply very clean power uh, to the digital part of the equipment. But we also have um, uh, less need for it because the manufacturers are relying on the fact that we're separating power supplies, that power supplies for uh, office equipment is, um, generally speaking, protected because we've separated out uh, things like elevators and, and what have you. Um, so we have a variety of possible faults, uh, as I say, sags, um, that uh, tends to be, uh, you know, a, a reduction in the voltage particularly, um, but over a longer period of time. And then there's spikes, um, which tend to be an uh, increase in voltage, um, but for a shorter period. When it's for a more protracted period, and, and generally speaking there, the voltage is not climbing as high, um, tends to be called a surge. Uh, and then we get uh, brownouts, of course, where um, the um, increasingly the uh, power utilities are trying to give everybody some power, but you know it, it may not meet the threshold. The uh, voltage normally running at around 110 may drop to 80 volts, and uh, at that point it gets to be a bit problematic because, of course, for digital equipment, you know, a one is the voltage is on, and, and generally speaking, um, they're running at about uh, five volts. Um, but it's not going to be between 5 volts and 0 volts. You know, 0 is, is 0 volts, 1 is 5 volts. Um, but no, you know, it's going to be like uh, 4.3 volts, and it's going to be 0.9 volts. Um, and so it's, you know, it's not cut and dried because this is analog. This is um, physical. Um, we have to make allowances, and, and generally speaking, the uh, digital equipment does. Um, there is a range that is going to be acceptable, but there is a range that is acceptable, and if you go beyond that range, then it gets problematic. You know, is this a one or is it a zero? Uh, and the fact that you don't have sufficient input power is going to... Uh, impact those types of situations and um, you know if you don't have enough uh, y you go to you know from 110 to 80 volts in the input power um, it's going to depend on on how much 
uh, equipment you've got running on a single circuit and, and some of the, the current considerations, uh, the total resistance of the system, as to whether or not you can get uh, an appropriate level of voltage inside the digital system. Um, so you want to have some alternatives for the power supply. Now, um, you know, most people are running on the utility, but we, we do realize uh, that this is going to be uh, a possible problem. And I think I've uh, already spoken about the fact that, you know, what is the greatest cause of data loss in uh, our society today, in North America particularly? Squirrels. Uh, that uh, the greatest cause of loss of data is power loss. The greatest cause of power loss happens to be squirrels that uh, they're jumping between the lines, they get fried, they trip a circuit breaker and, and you know, they're dead, but so is the power supply. So, uh, you know, we lose uh, power. So we try and uh, ensure that uh, we have other sources of power to keep our uh, systems running, even at a, a minimal capacity, uh, as long as we need them to. Um, so we have, we have battery systems. We have standby power systems. Um, we have uninterruptible power supply systems. Uh, the difference there is, is the standby power systems may take a while to kick in. The uninterruptible power supply systems, um, they uh, tend to come on right away. So um, they're, you know, you could have a, a UPS which doesn't have a huge battery system and it will uh, kick in and, and you know, run for a few minutes until you can get your standby power si system uh, connected up. Um, the, uh, then there's generators. Um, you know, batteries are, are good. Batteries are fine. We uh, know a lot about battery technology and, and particularly with the, uh, rise in popularity of, uh, uh electronic vehicles. Um, we are developing, uh, battery technology. Um, and it's becoming better and better and cheaper and cheaper and, and having more and more capacity uh, available to it. But um, when you want to run the system for a long time, you're probably going for a generator. And it depends on what you consider essential in your company as to what's covered by the generator system. It depends on... Uh, what, uh, uh, you know, how long you think the, the power may go out. Um, and so we have, you know, different sizes of generators uh, and uh, different storage options for whatever the fuel is, generally diesel, um, to run the, uh, the power system. Um, there's all kinds of, of stories about this. Um, and, and the failure of people to, to recognize a single point of failure. Um, there was a, a company that um, uh, they had a generator system. The, um, uh, they had a power failure. Um, the system kicked in. The generator spun up. Um, everything went fine. The power came back on. They were all congratulating them. The next time the power went off, the generator didn't kick in. And that was when they realized, oh, there's no automatic shutoff when the power comes back on. So while, you know, the, the uh, power supply the previous time, uh, the, the power only went down for two or three hours, but the generator ran until the fuel ran out. Okay, somebody else learned from that. They got a huge tank. Um, and but of course they had to site it on an appropriate uh, patch of ground that was below the the level of the 
uh, building in the generator. So um, they had to have an electric fuel pump to pump the uh, fuel up to the generator in the case of a power failure. And that, unfortunately, um, uh, they only connected to the mains power. And so when the mains power went out, yes, the, the generator started working, but um, uh, almost immediately ran out of fuel because, of course, the electronic fuel pump wasn't getting any power to pump fuel.